before moving to bioinformatics you know that uh, these um, uh, bioinformatics actually is a new generation topic because it's uh, evolved only uh, in the last 30 years during the period of the last 30 years and uh, uh, you know that there is uh, <coughs> a large uh, surge in the production of data uh, in the uh, scientific uh, field, uh, not only in biology, in every field of research we have uh, accumulation of uh, uh, large quantity of data which cannot be handled uh, manually like that of the previous or old days. These type of data <coughs> that uh, uh, in the case of biology includes uh, the sequence informations and uh, literature uh, informations, then structural informations, everything, everything related with all uh, uh, and, and biological activities, networks, pathways, all such type of informations were accumulating in such a manner or in, in a logarithmic scale so that handling such data is uh, mm, uh, not uh, possible um, in a using a manual method. Somebody else is also joined. Okay. Uh, now, <coughs> for handling such data, now we have uh, various technologies available, including the advancements in the computational uh, science and data management, uh, computational biology, etc. Uh, which will uh, uh, enable us to ha properly organize and handle our data and retrieve useful information from that. Now, when we uh, talk about uh, such uh, handling of a large or enormous quantity of the data and knowledge management or information handling, I want to differentiate between some of the terms that is uh, used in knowledge management. It will help you to understand because uh, we are actually using a computer or an artificial intelligence for generate uh, storing and uh, uh, data, uh, generating information, and uh, even predicting something. So normally this is done by the human brain. And uh, now, if you are transferring such <coughs> uh, such uh, jobs to a computer or, a, or, or using a machine, then uh, we have uh, some. Uh, you know that there are some limitations for the machines. It is not uh, as intelligent as human brain. So then uh, the machines or the computers needs to be properly uh, programmed in such a way that it will handle the data and uh, your uh, information is properly processed and generated and uh, even the predictions from that information is uh, properly arranged. That, that's a part of the artificial intelligence. So, uh, the knowledge development in humans, uh, it is having various stages, we will see that. And that includes uh, 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 various, uh, okay, occurring higher levels of uh, uh, knowledge and ultimately reaching a stage of wisdom. And, and, uh, and that uh, type of uh, uh, pro uh, higher order organization of knowledge management in uh, computer science <coughs> is required for a proper and efficient handling of such data, not only biological, every field of science where data is available. So you can, I just uh, you can see that some of the statements were mentioned here, like uh, a collection of data is not information. A collection of data is not an information. There may be data, but that not, may not be that may be useless if it doesn't have any usefulness. So that means an information is something uh, or data uh, with usefulness. So data is information without useful uh, with, without the uh, usefulness data is uh, information without usefulness but if there is usefulness for the data then it becomes the information okay a collection of information is not knowledge and a collection of in knowledge is not wisdom a collection of uh, wisdom is not truth so there are various sayings like that because uh, uh, with every stage there is a higher order of organization of such a uh, data and information and, and this knowledge management. That, that is a uh, uh, hierarchy of uh, organizing these things uh, in the proper order. So the information is uh, knowledge without insight. There are These are some of the codes that is available. Now you can see that the data is actually just uh, are represented as symbols. Whereas, uh, because it, is, it doesn't have any meaning as such. 
for your uh, for example uh, you are marking your attendance uh, in a register and uh, uh, maybe you are arranging uh, you are uh, scribbling something in the even in your notebooks everything is data even if you are uh, sometimes if i are talking Uh, or delivering a lecture you might be scribbling on your not uh, notebook uh, some of the key points there are raw data but if somebody else is uh, just looking into that book and see that there, there may be some uh, remarks which is marked by you that may not be a proper information for the other person because uh, it's only a raw data that needs to be processed to generate an information to generate something useful for example if you want to answer a question from the uh, notes that you are uh, or the data that is scribbling in uh, uh, scribbled by you in your notebook right, right now you need to properly arrange it organize it and generate some information so that you can answer that uh, that question subsequently asked in, a, in an examination question paper okay so data data were actually just symbols without any proper structure and uh, uh, organization whereas information is uh, the data that are processed to be useful and it, it provides answers to who what where and when such type of questions can be answered only if you process the data and generate an information then knowledge is the application of the data and information then you can answer how questions how or why and uh, that's a high, again higher order because you, you understand the things you have the knowledge and you have the capacity to understand then you can uh, have the ability to appreciate and uh, you can uh, say why it is happening so how it is happening or why it is happening such type of things they are actually a higher level of uh, uh, knowledge and uh, uh, that is possible uh, if you can properly uh, generate the information understand that or uh, and know the things and uh, uh, ask the questions how to uh, uh, how it is happening then again uh, you can understand or can define why such things were happening based on such process properly processed data and the subsequent information which is generated so this is a flow of information and uh, based on the hierarchical order and wisdom is actually it is a evalu- uh, it's an evaluator understanding so uh, wisdom is uh, again a higher order of uh, uh, knowledge management so you might have heard about uh, for example some uh, stories of uh, uh, four brothers who again uh, brought back the dead lion and uh, uh, the moral of the story is that uh, uh, the three brother i think you already know that story right it is uh, in the uh, isaus fables or something because uh, 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 three brothers were uh, actually they were so uh, uh, skilled in their area they have such a knowledge that how to rebuild the body of the lion how to uh, uh, to uh, give uh, life to the lion or such technologies or such uh, uh, skills were already there for all the uh, four brothers uh, for uh, all the three brothers but the outcome of giving or uh, life to the lion or uh, bringing the uh, bringing back the dead lion back to life the outcome of uh, that is uh, there only for the fourth brother so that's why he jumped out or climbed on the tree and escaped from uh, the attack of the lion that means the wisdom is again a higher order you should have knowledge you have information you have the knowledge you have the technical skills and understanding everything but uh, wisdom is again a higher order because you can predict the outcome and you can understand uh, the things then even without uh, even about the understanding you can also predict the outcome and that's the stage of the wisdom so uh, when i say this uh, uh, such a statement like um, it is raining it's a simple statement it may not be useful to you because uh, uh, maybe anyway it's a lockdown period you are not going outside and it's irrelevant if you are uh, if it is raining outside or not for you or i am saying that uh, some train uh, say parashuram express is leaving uh, or it is uh, actually 5 hours late that is only a statement with the data and you all uh, hear the uh, hear the statement you will record it so it's a raw data for you the statement that uh, parasaram express is 5 hours late becomes an information only if you are planning to travel today so in that case you will process the information 
and you will look into uh, uh, look into the other things so that uh, how to arrange uh, your travel or accordingly like so that it, that becomes information only if it is having some usefulness otherwise it still remains as a data so if you want to generate an information from uh, some data you want to ask specific questions because and uh, just like you are giving a query to the database or a google and uh, google is a, is a storehouse of the data you and based on your queries or your uh, your questions uh, which is given to the search box uh, something some information will be generated from the data and it will be displayed to you okay so again another statement the temperature dropped 15 degrees and then it started raining so there is a correlation because uh, because uh, 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 a cause and effect relation is there so that type of uh, uh, processed information is uh, uh, processed data which will give you some usefulness is uh, an information again knowledge knowledge means uh, is again higher order as i mentioned if uh, the humidity is uh, very high and the temperature drops substantially then the atmosphere is often likely to be able to hold the moisture so it rains so it explains why it rains or what are the uh, prerequisites for raining everything is explained there so if you can generate such an idea then it's a level of knowledge it's simply it, uh, simply stating raining doesn't contain anything but now uh, if you have the knowledge of uh, uh, these much things then you can explain why it's raining okay wisdom actually says that it rains because it rains because you know that and the difference between your brain and the computer is that uh, you have the state of wisdom which doesn't have which computer doesn't have so if i ask you uh, which one is best like uh, a human brain or computer what will be your answer human brain or human brain, human brain. hello human brain which one is uh, 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 the bet uh, better capacity human brain of course uh, why it is so um, because we made those computers oh of course but uh, you know that for example when we come to some uh, complex calculations or processing uh, the computers are much quicker and faster right uh, yes sir but uh, there has been records that uh, you know uh, enable people to do mathematical um, solutions far s faster than supercomputers right um, maybe there are some exceptions but uh, it's not uh, for all the cases but it's not like that because i will explain you how it happens uh, for example uh, human brain is actually a parallel system we works on parallel program in computer terms we have a serial thinking and parallel thinking serial thinking a normal computer is actually they or a single processor of a computer a single processor which performs a single task actually they read only zeros and ones power on or off yes or no so that is the and uh, it uh, based on different conditions that, uh, based on, uh, you know that every computer program works on yes or no conditions and if it is uh, yes you will follow this path no this will not so there will be a flow chart for the computer program to work so based on which it performs step by step operations sir, and finally it reaches a conclusion so that may be fast because based on the another uh, computational power and other things uh, it may be fast if the computer want to perform multiple tasks at the same time now you have multiple processors you have you may have uh, eight core processor or 16 core processor accordingly uh, for a super computer you have as many processors that is available which will give you some amount of parallelity but in the case of human brain what happens is that we have the neural network our processing is uh, parallel parallel means if i am asking you to just uh, go outside and uh, look into the sky and uh, tell me uh, is there any possibility of rain today how much time will be taken by you to uh, predict that one um, if we are just inside maybe no no you are just, no, no, you are just look look into the sky look into the sky is there you're outside okay you're outside okay Hey, after looking into the sky, when we start the observation, you know that, right? Within seconds, you, Within know, seconds that. you know. 
okay you uh, you know that within uh, on the side of or uh, or on observing the sky you feel uh, the entire uh, climate like uh, uh, the clouds uh, the, uh, whether it is sunny or not whether there is wind or not and you feel the things you are not processing it one by one like uh, uh, just like a computer things uh, uh, usually we have the super computers for predicting uh, such climates and uh, which will process these things uh, parallelly using parallel programming algorithms and multiple processes but it may take that much time but for you to uh, understand that things you just look into the sky and you know because your brain uh, parallelly processes all these things and that's happens and that's whenever, whenever you have uh, uh, a specific context uh, based on your knowledge levels and wisdom you understand the situations and you are not thinking one by one so uh, if you are placed in any particular situation uh, of of life uh, you will know what to be done next without much thought because you have the knowledge and understanding of all the existing conditions and you are not thinking whether uh, it is to be done yes no or whether the next step is to be done it is not like that based on your knowledge and experience and wisdom you know what to be done uh, as the next step because and, uh, and while taking the decision you considers all the possible maybe thousands or millions of possibilities available and you know the things and that level of uh, knowledge and accumulation and generation of wisdom is uh, the ability of the human brain so we can say that human brain is uh, much faster because we process the things parallelly and for what about and that uh, normally the computers require very much higher computational power and then only it will take much more time so you can always uh, appreciate the ability of the human brain right. so this is a uh, uh, the uh, data management uh, system in which the data is at, at the lower level and with increasing understanding uh, we can generate information from the data then again if you understand the patterns then you can generate knowledge and in, uh, with the increasing connectedness you can have if you understand the principles then uh, you have the wisdom and uh, uh, always uh, there is a saying that uh, truth lies somewhere else because uh, uh, understanding principles and other things as in a scientific way maybe a believer may not accept that one because uh, uh, based on the understanding and principles and other things uh, uh, using the scientific procedures uh, etc maybe you will not define a go uh, define goat or you, you cannot uh, connect these two so truth may lie somewhere else uh, because uh, uh, science works on uh, actual observations and interpretations uh, maybe after a few years we if you have a better technology to understand the thing other things like uh, a new form uh, uh, like new elements or uh, or new dimensions etc maybe there is something else which needs to be discovered so science doesn't uh, close the door for uh, higher levels of uh, wisdom and uh, possible ways to uh, reach the truth uh, so science never say that it is true it is as per our understanding this is a condition that's the only statement of the science and uh, there is no truth for science truth may change according to your understanding and if you have a better understanding and better tools better instruments you will have a uh, uh, a higher level of uh, uh, knowledge development and uh, uh, truth is actually uh, science, we, uh, as scientists we will not use the term truth there is no absolute truth so this is a uh, knowledge management and uh, why i show all these things is that, that using the computers we are trying to process the data generate information and if you understand the patterns just like uh, protein structure prediction etc you can generate new knowledge and uh, present bioinformatics actually reaches up to only that level and uh, by understanding the principles and reaching a higher level of wisdom and etc etc were uh, not uh, actually attributed to the computers and for which you require a human brain itself but uh, the data storage processing and generation of the information and even prediction of some patterns and other things uh, which is actually a new knowledge development just like uh, computational prediction or drug discovery etc which is a uh, which we will see in the subsequent lectures and up to that level it is possible to uh, organize your data 
using such computers under technology or computational biology. So this is the knowledge management uh, system and I just want to give you a brief introduction on that. So this is another table uh, during the data processing, uh, uh, unfiltered data that was uh, in the 1950s and 60s and 70s and 80s we have information management systems and again uh, 90s we have the knowledge management systems and uh, knowledge ecology, intelligence wisdom. So this is the same hierarchy law. So information science and data mining, these two terms to be uh, defined, information science have the knowledge and understanding of uh, how to collect, classify, manipulate, store and retrieve and disseminate any type of information. Uh, that not, may not be biological. So information science handles data and uh, there should be provisions for uh, uh, the knowledge and understanding on how to collect, collect data, classify data, manipulate and store data retrieve data after storing if you want uh, to generate some information then you have to retrieve the stored data then uh, disseminate any type of information so this type of processes were actually coming under the purview of uh, information science whereas data mining is another term and uh, the process of extracting patterns of data data mining is uh, data mining is the process of extracting patterns from data so so that we can generate information on higher level of understanding Data mining is becoming an increasingly important tool to transform the data into information and knowledge. So data mining from stored databases is another tool and we will have a lot of tools available for a biological data mining or stored data, stored information retrieval from such uh, data, biological database is available and which require uh, generation of information which is required for the generation of uh, information and the generation of uh, new knowledge. It is commonly used in a wide range of profiling practices such as marketing, surveillance, road detection, scientific discovery, not only in biological science, every field of uh, uh, life we have such a data mining techniques available. So now we come to the biological components. Uh, you can see that uh, the information processing in cells, it is actually following a very specific pathway. And you know that the information sphere now stored in nuclei, uh, in the, in, in the uh, genetic material that is the DNA or RNA. And we have the chromosome, again uh, the content, uh, in the, it is uh, usually presented in the chromosome and you know that it is, it is a packing of the chromosome. Uh, you might have already aware of this picture in which uh, the Content, uh, the DNA packed around the histone proteins, then this is a 30 mm fiber, uh, 30 mm fiber, then this is a scaffold of protein fold, again further condensation, and finally the condensed chromosome is formed from that DNA. So this is a storehouse of the information in a biological system. And this is a central dogma of uh, molecular biology, uh, where the information uh, from, uh, uh, information in biological system, information uh, uh, processing and transfer of uh, uh, information uh, in biological system is occurring in uh, using all these uh, mechanisms. For example, uh, the DNA replication is uh, actually transfer of information from DNA to DNA or replication. And again, uh, the transcription process from where the information in DNA is actually transcribed to the RNA, then translation process in which uh, uh, information in RNA is translated into the other language of uh, proteins. Then again, uh, we have uh, RNA replication from uh, where RNA template is used for uh, replication of the RNA. So where we have uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase is used. And again, uh, there is a reverse transcriptase process in which uh, uh, the uh, RNA is used as a template to generate a DNA. So, and there are different enzymes like uh, DNA polymerase, reverse transcriptase, RNA polymerase, then RNA dependent RNA polymerase, etc. Uh, all these things were uh, used in the uh, process of replication and transcription, etc. So this is the flow of information in a biological system. Okay. Now the type of biological data that we are going to discuss, that includes nucleotide sequences, protein sequences, protein sequence and pattern, uh, protein sequence patterns or motifs of the proteins, 
macromolecular 3D structures, three-dimensional structures of the proteins, gene expression data, metabolic pathway information, scientific literatures, all these things are uh, the popular forms of biological data available for handling, storage and processing. Is it clear? Yes, Hello? Sir. yes, sir. Now, in the core of bioinformatics, we actually um, handle the relationships between the sequence, the structure, and the protein functions. So, that's if we are uh, handling a biological system, we have a protein, nascent polypeptide, with a linear, um, linear uh, primary sequence, which is uh, shown in this box, and from which a three-dimensional structure is actually a four, uh, generated by uh, either uh, protein prediction, structure prediction, or by uh, structure determination methods like uh, cyclostylography or NMR, etc. So, three-dimensional structure of the protein can be uh, determined from that sequence. Then again, uh, using that sequence, you can uh, study and predict the functions of the concerned protein. So, where we have the metabolic pathways, uh, where, the, uh, where the concerned protein and its function is involved. So, we, uh, the core, in the core of bioinformatics includes uh, storage, retrieval and processing of uh, sequence informations, then prediction and handling of the three-dimensional structures, and again, the uh, handling of the protein functions and uh, study of the interactions between the proteins, etc. So, these are all part of the bioinformatics and the study and properties and evolution of genes, genomes, proteins, metabolic pathways in cells, etc. All these were part of bioinformatics. Then use of knowledge for prediction, modeling, design. So, available information, for example, a protein sequence information can be used for predicting the structure, modeling the structure and modeling or simulating some drug interactions and designing something. All these things can be done from the available information of a protein sequence. Now, in the case of a, a biology in the computer age, you know that biologists collect and interpret data from their research. In 21st century, we use sophisticated laboratory technologies that allow us to collect data faster than we can interpret it. In the previous years, we have very slow sequencing methods. But now we have automated sequencing machines or parallel NGS, national next generation sequencing instruments, which will allow you to generate terabytes of data within a very few hours. So the data generated by such larger machines nowadays is that much higher that uh, even machine uh, using uh, even using a machine, it will take much more time to interpret that data, uh, to process and interpret something from that large amount of or enormous amount of data nowadays is quite difficult. So, how do we figure out which part of DNA control the various chemical process of life? So, we have a, long, a larger DNA or a, from a genome or a genome of a new, new organism. And if you want to understand which part of the DNA is relevant for a chemical process, for example, which part of the DNA out of a larger chromosome, which region of the, uh, the, uh, the DNA is coding for a particular protein? And so that it is responsible for a biological process. How will you determine that? And uh, we know the function and uh, that is one condition where such bioinformatics uh, uh, is uh, applicable. And again, uh, we know the function and structure of some proteins. How do we determine the function of new proteins? That is another question. Then how do we predict the proteins? Uh, uh, how do we predict it, what a protein will look like from the sequence, raw sequence of a protein? How will you predict the structure of a protein based on uh, available knowledge and sequence information? So, such a type of uh, questions can be answered uh, using such computational technology. Now, when we come to the complexity of the genome studies, we have about 3 billion base pairs in human genome. And these 3 billion base pairs in human genome, uh, that means uh, we have uh, uh, just we can just compare it with uh, a, uh, the size of a Bible. Uh, that's about uh, say 22 lakh 78,000 and 100 letters. That's 2.2 uh, million, uh, million letters is there uh, in a Bible. So uh, you know the size of a Bible. 
So that means one genome with uh, 3 billion letters needs to be sequentially written or serially written uh, in, uh, in 1000 books of the size of a Bible. So that just you can see that you need uh, require an entire library of 1000 books to just simply write the sequence of a single human genome. So that is the length of the sequence. So you know that it is uh, impossible to read all these things and find uh, the sequence responsible for a particular uh, gene or a protein production uh, from such a large amount of data. And there are about 25,000 genes in the human genome. It is hard to identify, harder to figure their function because uh, you know that uh, the, the length of the sequence, table and base per sequence is that much uh, higher. And, uh, it is harder to identify a particular sequence of 1000 or 2000 base pairs from such a longer length. And even if you identify the sequence it is, uh, and identify the protein, it, it will be harder to identify the function. If you, you identify a novel uh, gene, a potato gene, which is actually not coded from one of the sequence. And uh, you, you know that there is a protein um, uh, produced. But how will you predict the function of the protein? You require such bioinformatics tools. And even it is harder to figure out how they work together because we have many proteins in the system, biological system, how they will interact. So the interaction of the protein is the net result of the biological functions. So how these proteins will interact and they, so, so that the ultimate outcome of the, the of their, uh, that, that metabolic pathway is monitored and uh, or it's regulated, how it is done. So this needs to be uh, better uh, understand, uh, understood by bioinformatics uh, tools like uh, uh, say structure prediction tools for prediction of, uh, and function prediction tools are there and again there are metabolic pathways and there are interaction studies etc. Uh, all these type of uh, facilities are available uh, in bioinformatics. So this is the definition of uh, bioinformatics and computational biology. Bioinformatics and computational biology involves the use of techniques including applied mathematics, informatics, statistics, computer science, artificial intelligence, chemistry and biochemistry to solve biological problems usually on a molecular level. Now bioinformatics, it applies principles of information science and technologies to make the vast, diverse and complex life science data more understandable and useful. So bioinformatics actually they uh, use all these technologies to make the uh, biological data more understandable and useful. Whereas computational biology uses mathematical and computational approaches to address theoretical and experimental questions in biology. So this is more mathematical and computational approaches, computational biology whereas the actual handling and understanding of the uh, information of uh, biological sequence information and their, uh, their, uh, their structure, their function etc. That comes under the bioinformatics topics, whereas uh, the tools that is required for understanding such things or handling such data were generated by computational biologists based on their mathematical and computational approaches. Although bioinformatics and computational biology are distinct, there is also a significant overlap and, uh, and their activity at their interface. So bioinformatics is a, a research development or application of computational tools and approaches for, exp, uh, for expanding the use of biological, medical, behavioral and health science data including those to require, uh, store, organize, achieve, ar archive and uh, analyze or visualize all these things. So uh, bioinformatics uh, includes research development and application of uh, computational tools for expanding these uh, biological, medical and behavioral or health science such type of data. And also not only storing, then uh, organizing, archiving and analyzing and visualizing uh, such type of stored data. All these uh, were coming under the purview of bioinformatics. Whereas computational biology, they include the development and application of data analytical and theoretical method, mathematical modeling, computational simulation techniques and the study of biological and behavioral social systems etc. Basically they uh, work on the programming side and development of the tools and techniques that is required for uh, uh, handling the data. So that is the difference between bioinformatics and computational biology. Then <coughs> this uh, uh, shows the different areas uh, including in computational structural biology, bioinformatics and uh, systems and mathematical biology and there, there is a significant overlap between these uh, areas. 
So you know that in computational structural biology we have molecular modeling and simulations of the protein structures and other things. Then protein drug designing and drug interactions, uh, they, they are part of computational structural biology. So that uh, if you uh, are designing a new drug and testing against a new target, you require computational st uh, structural biology so that uh, you can model the structures, uh, try to, uh, uh, to, in, uh, to uh, study how they interact. One uh, drug will interact with its receptor that can be modeled and studied using computational biology, computational structural biology. Then we have sequence function mapping and the proteomics, genomics applications, etc. That comes under the bioinformatics region. Whereas uh, the study of the metabolic pathways, the network dynamics, and uh, neurosystems, etc., that is part of uh, mathematical or systems biology. Then there is uh, some overlapping regions uh, like uh, cell simulations, structural informatics, gene expression, microarray analysis. All these things are various areas or overlapping areas of uh, computational, computational structural biology, bioinformatics, and systems biology. Basically, the network uh, networks or metabolic pathways were a part of the systems biology. Proteomics, genomics, and sequence-based approaches were part of the uh, bioinformatics. And uh, molecular modeling and the protein uh, drug designing and engineering, etc., were basically structural biology. So these are uh, the different terms that is to be uh, that you are, that you need to be familiar with uh, in the subsequent sessions. So you can say that uh, uh, there are tool users and tool makers. Bioinformatics and medical informatics and public health informatics, etc., where bioinformatics patients they use the tools uh, available in the field. Whereas the tool makers were the computational biologists who create the databases, the infrastructure that is required, the computer, computer infrastructure that is required, and the algorithms or the programs that is required for processing the data. They are tool makers. So bioinformatics patients were basically tool users and computational biologists were actually basically tool makers. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Uh, I think it's uh, about one hour. Uh, do you want to st uh, stop right now so that we can continue in the next session? Okay, sir.